Welcome back. We have another geometry problem today. I don't know where it's from, but kind of tells me it's good. It also tells me I'm not allowed to coordinate bash it because when I look at the problem, I think the correct response is obviously just coordinate bash. But we're going to pretend we didn't say that and see how it goes. Uh, I hope it goes somewhere. Let's find out. Uh, so, I have quadrilateral with perpendicular diagonals, which are definitely not the x and y axis. Um, Oh, this is IMO1? Okay. Uh... Wait. Really? This is supposed to be easy? I feel like when I saw the problem, it didn't look like it should be. I don't know. Maybe I'm just too paranoid. It's like the... Why did B show up? Hey, 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 get over here. Uh... The heck? Judge it, brah! What are you doing? What? No, I just want four points. <sighs> Whatever. We'll do it this way. So, I have quadrilateral IVCD with perpendicular diagonals. And I let the perpendicular bisectors of the opposite sides a b and c d meet at p so p equals intersect cool so that happens we'll draw a c and b d because we care that the perpendicular Okay, and we'll let M. Let's draw on the midpoints. You really expect me to not coordinate match this problem? Oh my god. So I want like AM, AB times PM equals CD times PN if and only if cyclic. So I say one direction is actually clear. Because if it's cyclic, um, then P is the circumcenter. And so the angle here, PAB, is the measure of... It's like this guy, this guy. Like what happens if it's cyclic? Yeah, one direction I think should be clear. Because... Let's see. So it's saying that like this angle A D B and this angle um What's the other angle that's the the pops up? Like it, okay, it's saying that arcs A B and C D add up to 180, which is fine. That's that's fine. So if cyclic, easy. He is circumcenter. Evan, how do you use vectors? You... I, I'm not sure what to say. You, you have six vectors with some zero. They are unit vectors, and three of them are on an equilateral triangle. You're not... No, it's not a bash. You just look at the vectors. Um, write down six equalities. Why are you writing six equalities? Wait, what? You, you have six vectors. They add to zero. They're each of magnitude one. Okay, moving on. Uh, let's zoom in. So now, what if they have equal area? So if they have equal area, then I get like some ratio of sides. I have some right angles. For the side lanes being equal? No, you, they, they are just vectors. Like, you should draw six vectors on the unit circle. That, that's what you're... Actually, okay, ju just go on my website and read the solution at this point. I, I think if you're not seeing it now, you're not going to see it for the next hour either. 
Like, I, at this point, I'm, like, trying to tell you the solution, so you should just read the solution. Opening file failed? What file? What? What? How many page views does your website have? I don't know. <sighs> yeah, actually, I haven't checked the statistics on that in ages. Let me pull it up. Just out of curiosity. Analytics.google.com Wow, there's so many numbers. I'm seeing numbers, I don't know what the denominators are. Um... Okay, apparently my website has about 7,000 active viewers in the last 28 days, so... Yeah, that's a... I guess that's a number. Right now there's one person actively viewing the site on their cell phone. <laughs> viewing Olympia.html. Why did you choose to make a WordPress blog instead of an OPA Alps blog? Why would I want my blog to be on like harder problem solving? Like the link it looks terrible. Like also I think the features aren't as great. Oh my god. I was about to reach for the ban button until I realized that was just you guys messing around. <laughs> I just saw the, the all the symbols, I was like, oh here they are again. PN times DC equals AB times PM. What does that do? The top one isn't us? Wait, where? Oh! <laughs> oh, there's- <laughs> Okay, uh, one moment. Then. Okay, so th there is an imposter among us. We got him. Alright, let's see. Uh. What am I supposed to do with this? I, I have all these right triangles. Um, in the equality case, like when it's actually a thing, these triangles are supposed to be similar. Are they similar now? Like is BPM, can I say something about BPM and AED have something in common? So 
So the lanes I actually know are like A, B versus D, E. Does your intuition agree there's a sign area solution paired with law of signs? I I think I'm neutral to that. Um Right now I am still in the confused phase. Oh, <laughs> Is PPD isosceles? Uh, only in the desired situation. <laughs> I mean, yes, it's isosceles because P is actually the circumcenter in like if, but like if again PPD PD equals PD, then we're set. I yeah. Uh, the problem is I I, I have some skepticism <laughs> that is what's going on here. Maybe I do want these points. So I've been like staring at these points for a while, like this point and this point, and I think I'm convinced I should try to add them because they give me a they both give me a cyclic quad, and they give me the potential that maybe there's like some like we we think that this triangle is actually isosceles. I think like we, we think this is an isosceles triangle. Um. Well... Yeah, but I, I want to take advantage of the two cyclic quads. So... What if I consider the locus where PAB equals PCD? That will give you uh What is that locus, actually? I feel like I I should know what it is, but I don't remember off my head. It's the set of points on the line through AB intersect CD with certain fixed. Oh, that's probably why AB and CD have to be. It's a line. It's it's for sure a line. I just don't know exactly what the ratio is. Yeah, that, that does feel really good though, because I do, if A, B, and C, D are parallel, the problem is like kind of broken. So I do kind of want to use the fact that they intersect. So I believe that locus is the angle bisector actually. I thought PAB equals PCD. What? Oh, it's rocky. So in the equality case, or equality case is not really the word. In the desired case where they're actually cyclic, um, this is what the picture is supposed to look like. Hang on, no, 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 no. Is it an angle bisector or something else? What's what's the locus? 
Doesn't depend on ABN. You're right. Uh, sorry. It's just a line. It's not the angle bisector. I'm thinking of a different thing. Um. It's a thing with some ratio. Uh. Okay, I forget the angle bisector thing I said. I'm just being silly. On the other hand, there are now a gazillion cyclic quads. PMN. This circle feels really nice. Um, yeah, th this circle actually feels like the best circle I've drawn. Where... So I want, I want to use this area as equal condition somehow. And what can I do? Yeah, I know, it really- it, this problem is, is asking to be coordinate bashed, but I've been told the solution is good, so I'm like, trying to not do that. Eventually, I may give up and just resort to that. <laughs> Why does Evan's face seem bigger than an hour ago? Probably, I, I mean it is. It's larger in the GeoTube review. Uh, in the Z3 review, where it's a PDF viewer, I am like compressed here. And here, I take up more space. Uh -huh. um, I haven't used the fact at all that this is a right angle here. I would like to use this at some point. Um... This thing is a McKell thing, right? I've seen this picture before, actually. This is like... How does it go? No, this is a McHale thing. This is a McHale thing. Let's rotate the picture. Um... Oh my god. This is gonna be... This is gonna be annoying. Uh... Uh... Uh...
This looks so bad. You think I know how to draw this picture by now? Uh. Why are they stuck? Why can't I move this? Okay, so I, there's something spiral happening here. I feel it. Do we establish this? No, we haven't. I mean, the 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 areas is saying PN times CD equals AB times PM. Okay, so there is a unique spiral similarity which carries this segment DC to this segment AB, and we can construct it by something. I don't know what that something is. Uh, I should know though. It's here. Uh, so there is a unique spiral similarity centered at this point Q. It is the McHale point of the not necessarily cyclic quadrilateral NCBA. This spiral similarity carries C and B to B M A. That's fine. P also lies on this circle, uh, so something might happen real soon. Uh, it's... Yep. So yeah, these are the three big spiral similarity circles, and we want to use this somehow together with the fact that P is doing something funky. Uh, I'll call them... let's call them green. QEP collinear, I bet that's got to be true. That's got to be the way, right? No, really? Okay, never mind. Oh, wait, no. QEP are collinear if the. I see. So if they're cyclic, they should be collinear. Uh, so. Dang it. This is so hard to get right. So in the equality case, uh, yeah, QP should be collinear. So yeah, that, that looks like the route where we should go. So what's going on? So if the... We don't know these points are actually cyclic, but we think they are. That's what we want. So let Q be the McHale point shown. And what we know is that um, PN times CD equals PM times AB, or equivalently, PN against AB is equal to PM against CD. Yeah, if it's cyclic, I mean, if it's cyclic, there's nothing to do. Um, oh, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, if it's cyclic, then it's by follows by just inverting. I agree. Um, but I mean, I remind that we haven't used this right angle fact yet. Like this, this right angle fact is still at large. We don't know why it, that's required. Like so far, nothing we've done requires DB and AC to be perpendicular. Thank you, the one John for the follow. So it has to be something more that we haven't gotten yet. Um, P 
carve a point on E. That could be a root here. You, you somehow transfer the information from P onto E or something. I feel like this Q feels really good because it, it locks in the... Like, there we have five points on this circle. So it sort of locks a lot of the important ones in. So I guess the upshot of all these right angles is that xqp is equal to 90, right? I guess we should draw that. Is CEPD cyclic? Nah, really? Uh, no. E is the McHale point, though, so that gives us a. Or not, Q is the McHale point, so there, there's a bunch of other things that are true in this picture that I haven't pursued. Um. P and Q lie on the Apollonius circle. That is true. How can I use the right angle? Oh, actually, QP is the angle. No, 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 no. There's an angle bisector somewhere. Hang on, where is it? Let's see. No. Yeah, I think I think what I guess what I say is the Q N P M is a harmonic quadrilateral. I I like that a lot. So Q N over Q M is equal to N C over B M is equal to. Wait, is it harmonic really? It's flipped, right? It's like MP... MP over PN. Let's... Wait, am I crazy? Yeah, that is what it implies, though. Um...
Yeah, so PT always bisects. Well, with a condition, it's the same as saying PT bisects. Or, yeah, PT cure Kalinir, where T is the midpoint of MN. On the other hand, maybe that's just true for E as well. Like, is. Thank you, Cup 2 of tea for the follow up. Yeah, I have the same thought that it's a parallelogram, but I can't see why. Uh... Oh, actually, EN... Oh, EN is has the same... EN and EM are equal to... Huh. Yeah, I, I, I need to draw EN. How do you make your eyes good at swatting these things? Uh... That is a skill you can practice. If you have more experience, you will notice them faster. I don't think there's a trick to it. Um, if, you, if you've if you seen like a thousand cyclic quads, then the one thousand first cyclic quad will be easier to notice because they literally like, it's the layout of the points. You can do art school, yeah. <laughs> or you can help me write levels for GeoGuessr. No one's been doing that. Um, it actually is this. I didn't think it was going to be this way, but you are right. EN has that same length. So actually, even without this point Q, like before the point Q appeared, we already knew that in this... They, they have the same ratio. Like EN is equal to... CN is equal to DN as well. Okay, so I agree it should be a par it's it's almost certainly should be a parallelogram in the quality case. Um in the generic case, we know already that What do we know? What do we know in the general situation? Uh it, it's so hard because it's conditional so I can't test my hypotheses. But in the general case, we know that EN is equal to so this times this equals this times that. How fat lot of good that does. <laughs> I still haven't used the fact that it's now I've used the fact it's a right angle because it transfers the lengths to E. So I think E and Q lie on the same Apollonian circle. I think it's, that's what we can conclude right now. Like e and Q both lie on the same Apollonian circle. And P is like a reflection thingy. We haven't gotten the parallelogram yet. What we do have is that EN equals NC. So like Q and E lie on the same Apollonian is what's, what's happening. Um... Like QN against EN is QN against CN. That's true unconditionally, actually. B 
before. We don't have the parallelogram yet. I, I actually have not. I don't see why it's true, but I strongly suspect it is. So at this point, I almost can stop thinking about E, A, B, C, D, right? Like I can almost stop. If, I feel like I almost don't need A, B, C, D anymore. Oh, I finally know why that right angle is there. I'm playing. E is the ortho center of XMN. The heck? Uh, oh, I mean, a posteriori, yes. Is it true a priori? I agree it should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. MN is the radical axis by adding E and M. Can we not just calculate the lengths? I mean... We know the lengths are in the correct ratio for it to be a parallelogram. Is this just a McKill point property? No, I feel like the right angle is pretty particular. If what has happened since then? We are doing this Geo. IMO1 Geo. <laughs> Apparently it's an IMO1. <laughs> Mostly because I expect everyone just coordinate bashed it. What am I interested in? Uh, number theory. Professionally. But I don't know anything. I feel like we shouldn't be. There shouldn't be that much left. I know that EN is equal to CN exactly. On triangle XMN. What's the isogonal lemma you're referring to? Which one? Oh, that one! Oh, we don't know it's a parallelogram yet. Um, I guess if I could show the um, cyclic, then it would apply. Well, actually, you need the isogonal too. I agree it's that picture, yes. Um, however, we also think E is actually the ortho center of XMN, so that seems like it's a bit overkill for our purposes anyways. Like, we don't have the parallelogram yet. We only know that, like, EN against EM is, like, this against this is, like, equal to this against this. 
I know that PT and Q are linear. Parallelogram follows from ABCD cyclic. We don't know it's cyclic though. Like that's what we're trying to prove. Yeah, the right angle I think is definitely there so that EN is equal to NZ equals ND. Because the right angle seems like too awkward to use otherwise. Maybe I do need to chase some angles as well. So, in this right triangle, do any of the angles here transfer to other angles? Um, Which direction are you trying to show? We want to show it's cyclic. We have if 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 it's known cyclic, then everything is clear, and like the right angle is kind of stupid, honestly. This is the interesting direction, I think, where we know that we know that the ratio, like this times this, is equal to this times this. Like the two red triangles of equal area. We draw the McHale point, and so on, and the ratios tell us a bunch of things, like. We, these these points are definitely like they are they are going to be collinear. I don't know if that's the really one. I feel like the root, the point Q is good though because it passes it, it it brings all the points like X and P M onto one circle. So you get some nice spiral black magic. And then the ratio is like they get transferred in two ways. Like CN can be transferred to QN. CN is also equal to EN. So actually like QC, yeah. Uh, triangles QNE and QME are like something. How does the info about size line? So if three unit vectors are at 120 degree angles, they sum to zero for Geico. So the other three also sum to zero. So they are also at 120 degree angles. Are the angles concur? Wow. 
What does it do? I, I think you should just look at the solution on my website. Like at this point, like you're you're definitely just not seeing it, and I'm trying to just tell you the solution. So look at the nice write up. I really want the parallelogram. I do know that QTP are collinear. E is the one that I don't know that. Um, what is the locus? It is a line passing through X with ratio something something. Actually, now that I think, no, you don't know the perpendicular yet. This is not IMO one, Jesus. XP and AD. I want to add AD. I don't see the point of AD. XP feels okay. I think I actually had it earlier and deleted it. Isn't the ME perpendicular to XC thing really well known? Wait, why is that true? Wait, is this well known? Wait, what did I miss? They're, they're not known to- like, ABCD is not known cyclic. I think the thing you're referring to is if it's cyclic, right? Yeah, I agree. I, I had that thought when I first saw it too, but yeah, it requires a cyclic condition. That's what we're trying to prove. I want to fandom point it. Uh, E prime M N equals M P. <laughs> yeah, that's What if E prime is the ortho center and show E prime equals E? Honestly that's not a bad idea. Uh, that actually seems like it might be pretty good. So E prime is the ortho center. Uh, da -da -da. It lies on everything that we want. Yada yada yada. I just need to show that they are right angles, and that will do it. Okay, so let, let's like, yeah, that that's actually a good line. We let H be the ortho center of X M N, and then it's on here. It has the right ratio, so it's on the correct Apollonia circle. Um. Can I? Mm -hmm. It's hard to tie it onto. Like, what properties does this E satisfy? This E has the E N against E M property, which we really like, and we 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 need one other thing that we don't have. I think we we need one other thing it satisfies. Like right now, E is some point that's on a circle passing through Q. Most of those points won't have right angles.
I'm pretty sure I'm clowning, but is there an example of a statement that is significantly harder to prove than its converse? I mean... Yeah, that, that, that problem. Also, for example, this problem. <laughs> there are examples, they're rare, but they exist. But like, I mean... We've been here for like, a while. <laughs> Oh man, I don't know what I'm missing. This is an I'm a one. <sighs> DPC intersect APB. You want the other Mikhail point? Mm, I'll draw it. Yeah, in contest you definitely just coordinate bash this. Like, it's so... It's just asking for it. It is actually possible the other Mikkel point is better, because that, that Mikkel point will lie on line PX. But the problem with that Mikkel point, like, the, the problem with this Mikkel point is that it doesn't, um... Lie on the green circle. Like, it doesn't really let you use the midpoints. I think. D, E, C, intersect A, B, E. You want to use that one? Okay. Actually, yeah, that, that one's actually- it should be that one. Oh my. Is it on this? It, it's so. You're you're right. This one's actually just better. Um, hmm. So this point should also lie on the MN circle. So, Rn against Rm... I think men equals mpn holds generally. Really? I believe that actually. Oh, is it, always, is it unconditionally a parallelogram? No, it's not. What? But the angles are the same? Oh, 
What the heck? Wait, do I just angle chase to get that? What? Wait, am I stupid? That's true? Uh... That's true with no assumptions. Okay, well... Well, well... Wait, how does this English taste work? Uh, it's like... I have X... If I call this angle X, this angle... This is 180 minus 2X. 90 minus... This is 90 plus a thing, plus a thing. This is... How do you, how do you compute this? Uh, this plus this plus... I have too many circles, I need to hide some. Uh, I have not seen that anime. I actually have to use X, so like fine, but um, I transferred it up here, but like, oh, I know what this angle is, and this is nice. Oh, wait, that's such a strange angle, Chase. I guess, I guess it was true unconditionally and it's true unconditionally though. So this angle is always equal to this angle. And therefore, if... Wait, so is ETP always a parallelogram? No, it's not. But in the case where I have the ratio fact as well, the angle fact means that... Yeah, then then it's actually exactly a parallelogram, I think. It's either this point or the reflection of this point. Um, one of the points is R though, and the uh, Mikkel point here is never R. This is the other Mikkel point. It's like a reflection of E across R, I think, believe. Just use isosceles from E. I see. Okay, well now E is on here. And you get a parallelogram. So... That should do everything. Once you have a parallelogram, um, everything should happen. Yeah, that's true. You can direct the angles to get to this unique point. Why is a parallelogram? Um, so we know that EN against EM is like a certain ratio. It's on. It's on the same app. It's like. It's on this a certain circle, right? Like the the Apollonius or whatever. Yeah. However, we have one extra angle condition that apparently is just true unconditionally. Lord knows why. And so now it's this exactly this point. So this is a reflection here. Um, in general, if I have, uh, because of the right angles, that implies it's the orthocenter, so EN is perpendicular to PM. And from there, every you, we should have everything. Now we have the full power of the gram, so now everything's collinear. Q is the Mikkel point. 
I just need to get cyclic out of this and it should follow just from like literally anything. Um, like EN being perpendicular to AB should give me the angle actually. That, that alone should give me the angle I need. Because this is equal to twice this and this is something. It's like equal to... Yeah, actually, it, this thing, this means that this angle is 90 minus twice this angle, and similarly here. So now you get the arcs. And we're in the same beautiful configuration we know and love. Um, I don't know if I actually needed the point Q when I was doing this. Maybe the ratios is actually enough to get the parallelogram. I think the ratios was probably enough alone, actually. Hmm. So I don't need F and G, thankfully. The ratios enough is probably like once you define X and yeah, the ratios enough should actually do it. That that's all you need. You don't need anything additional. So, despite my excitement about the point Q, I do not believe that Q is ever really used here. Well, maybe, actually, I'm not totally sure. I think you just got a parallelogram. Yeah, I, I think surprisingly this doesn't require a Q. You just reflect PO across the you just say E EN divided by EM is equal to I'll, I'll I'll write it out just to make sure I'm not being crazy. So unconditionally the angles the angle N E M is equal to the angle M P M for the con and then also so delete this stuff about the Mikel point. Um EN divided by EM is equal to CN divided by CM, which is equal to PM divided by PN. And so... So by condition, and only one point with this property, Uh, inside ABCD, which is reflection of P. Actually, okay, directing the angles doesn't make everything quite go away. Um, there are two. There is actually two such points, right? Because one condition is a circle, and the other condition is also a circle. Um, however, oh shoot, yeah, I I intersected two circles. Um. Does one of them lie outside? Oh, Jesus. This is where I wave my hands. One condition is a minor arc? No, I mean, I directed everything, right? Wh which condition is a minor arc? I guess so, actually. Yeah, okay, fine. Like, because E is required to lie inside... Fine. Yeah, you can say E is required to lie inside, um, no it's not. No, it can be outside as well. It doesn't have to be inside X and M. Does it? Oh, jeez, lord. Okay, where, where are the two circles I'm intersecting? This is the circle that dictates the ratio. Um, and this is the circle that dictates the angle. And I'm worried that maybe E is the other intersection. But I think the circles will... My hope is that the circles never intersect both inside the green one. Let me hide it because it is. Uh, 
Really, okay, th this circle really should be um, circle through M and and M plus N minus P. So even in bad cases, um, wait, why does that circle always pass through E? Oh, that's the unconditional part. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Apollonia doesn't need to though, right? I don't know what exactly what the red circle is. <sighs> We're off by a little. I need some insight. I need some insight in this condition to uh, finish. What is your favorite anime? Uh, whatever it says on my anime list. <laughs> The other intersection is that point if, um, oh, that's pretty good, actually. Okay. Q, reflection of Q over M, then. That's true, yeah. Okay, so that should be true unconditionally. Yeah, that'll, that'll lie on both of them. And... Yeah, Q lies on a circle that encloses the entire quadrilateral. <laughs> So do I just need use Q to control? Oh, that's so... That's so janky. I mean, it's fine. I guess it works. Alright. Okay. I guess that's that. That should be okay. Have we done all four? No, we didn't do elk yet, but I don't know if I'm actually going to get to it. Uh, wait, actually, so why does it lie outside? Like, the reflection of the Q over MN. I need to show it's not on both the circle with diameter. So the reflection of a point, 
The reflection of a point on the dust circle with diameter CD through a line passing through N necessarily also lies on the circle, right? Okay, so the other section is the reflection of Q across MN. So if Q, um, if if that point is E, then Q is at a right angle with both CD and BA as well, and that seems extremely bad. <laughs> that that sort of implies E equals Q, which I don't think can happen. The circles with those diameters should intersect. At most ones. Well, either way, Q for sure lies outside. Um, yeah, for for a convex quadrilateral. Oh, that doesn't rule anything out though. This is so annoying. I think there's an unimportant typo. Can you like either send me an email or your... if you want to fix it for me, pull request would be optimal. But if you don't know what that means, just send me an email so I can keep track of it. Uh, there are a few typos to correct. <laughs> I have another email somewhere with a few more typos, so I can try to squash them all at once. Okay, how, 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 how do I prove that Q is not at a right angle? Because these circles with diameters... Well, okay. That's so horrible. Thank you, Riddy Chan, for the follow. I think what I say is that E and R are... Oh, but I don't know. This, this is so sad. Like, I'm, I'm actually confusing myself with the logic because it's so convoluted at this point. Like, I know that E satisfies certain properties. I want to rule out certain something else. I define Q and R. Those are okay to define. They're just Mikhail points. I want Q to not be the Mikhail point. Like I want... This feels like it should be obvious. If I have a convex quadrilateral, can the circle with like the... What the heck?
Okay, I think the fact that their diameters makes it okay. Um, the two the circles with diameter CD and AB, just in general, if I have a convex quadrilateral and I draw diameters on two of the sides, they all they should always meet um, inside the quadrilateral. I think this is always true. Uh, the argument is like by drawing the semicircles in like some some blah. <laughs> uh, is that is that always true? If I have a quadrilateral and then draw the semicircles on the two opposite sides, unsigned angle M E N is obtuse. Uh, does that disambiguate it? I guess, yeah, I guess that seems like it should work too. <laughs> it feels like almost anything should work, but I also don't trust myself to get these arguments right. Yeah, you're right though. Uh, angle O M E N in the undirected sense is up to, so is angle M P N, so. That should... That'll do it, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, okay, so I can I can make that just as okay, that's fine. What is the other problem you were attempting? There was uh something about like x squared minus 2 iterate minus x being irreducible, but I don't think I'm going to get to it today. Okay. Man, configuration issues are really the worst. <laughs> Everyone hates them, but I actually... I feel like because I am like a coach, I, I sh am obligated to like not just completely blow them off. Whereas if I was a high school student, I would just wave my hands and be like, We're done! We're done! Give me my 7! Uh, what was the fast solution to this? I don't know. <laughs> Hope I don't. <sighs> Give me my seven. All right. So, I mean, so our solution is not very long. Is is this is it? And I meant P, not Q. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't need a second bit. So the, the point Q turned out to not even be necessary. So you can you can actually just forget about the green circles. <laughs> All right, we did it. <laughs> Twenty nineteen G seven in the world everyone loves our hits. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you all for coming out. Uh hopefully this was at least mildly informative and not too boring because configuration issues. <laughs> and see you next time. <laughs>